So the big rule of thumb for infographics is you need to show, not tell. This applies to numbers as well. So this is probably a more interesting way of visualizing the number 13 than that. If we're talking about three pointers in a basketball game, we got to think of some way of showing that thing um, visually, whether it's with an icon or, you know, in some cases a graph or a chart. Uh, occasionally even photos might do the job, but you should really try to avoid having a number just sitting there by itself without showing uh, either a volume or a length or, you know, a pie chart, something. Uh, so let's talk about working with icons and how we might do these sort of tiling that you would want to have for consistency. Okay. So for starters, I would strongly recommend using the grid when you're creating your icons. So we're going to make like a really simple, you know, uh, referee doing the three point gesture, um, basically exactly what we've got here. So you're going to want to have your grid turned on uh, again. Uh, you can always go to view and it's nice to learn the keyboard shortcut command apostrophe to show and hide the grid and then snap to grid. Yeah. Is shift command apostrophe. So those are useful to know, but, once we've got that set, you're going to just want to use really basic shapes. Again, on something like a cell phone, this is going to be really small. So we want to try to avoid like really thin lines and things like that. Um, and when you're designing the icon, it can be pretty big and bold. So don't be afraid to kind of design it really large and then scale it down. Okay, so let's say we give them a head and you know, our body here. And, you know, I want the arms to kind of go up like so. So maybe I'll switch to the pen tool here and I'll start in here and we'll just go up like that. And I want to have the stroke, not the film. And we can crank up the stroke pretty big and we could round it out. And I'll just select that with the black arrow yeah, drag it on over using option drag. And I'll use the flip horizontal axis. Now his arms look a little skinny, so maybe I'll select them both and crank it up. Okay, now that might be enough, but if we wanted to just give it a little bit of something extra, um, just so that it's really clear that, uh, you know, there's a whistle there, we could make a whistle and we could slap it on there too. Okay, uh, that's going to involve a little bit more trickiness, but Let's do it. Okay, so uh, super simple whistle. I will make a, a circle and I'll take a rectangle and I'll just draw it like so. Okay, so a couple of things that we're gonna wanna do because this is a line and this is a shape. Let's go ahead and make the lines into shapes by selecting them and going to Object, Expand. And what that's going to do is turn those lines into shapes. Okay, cool. Now what I could do is let's just select those elements and smash them together using the Pathfinder. All right. And then I could take this guy and this guy and do kind of the same thing. I'm going to unite them together. And I want to be able to see this when I drag it over. So for now, I'll just, you know, switch to some other color. It doesn't really matter. And we could... Sure, make it kind of nice and big, probably a little bigger than that one. And what I could do is select all of that and say minus front. Okay, so again, it doesn't need to be kind of photorealistic. And if you're having a hard time figuring out what icon to use, uh, you might check out the noun project. Um, not that you should use necessarily any of that sort of pre-built stuff, but because it might give you an idea for how to represent that particular category or topic. Okay, now how do I get, let's say I needed, uh, you know, maybe that's the total number in lifetime and we need like a zillion of these and I don't wanna have to copy forever. Okay, so I'm gonna just move them down here uh, and let's say just, you know, let's say we needed 10 and we we're gonna do rows of 10. Okay, so I'm gonna drag them on down Okay, and 
Let's say I really needed a lot of referees. Okay, you don't want to go too small because then people won't actually be able to see it. So, you know, that's that's probably pretty tiny. Um, okay, the whole idea though is how can I make a bunch of these? All right, to the rescue comes effects, distort, transform, transform. Okay, and what this allows me to do is make multiple copies. So just for the sake of, you know, space and scale here, maybe I'll do rows of, of five. That's fine, we don't need to do 10. So I'm gonna say four here, and when I crank this up, you can see that the count does not include the original. So right now I've got four copies plus the original to make five. Okay, and I could keep going. And so yeah, we could make, you know, 10 or more, and we could make these really small. Uh, but I'm gonna try to keep it pretty visible, especially when scaled to cell phone size. And maybe they're gonna be, sure, 94 pixels apart. That's fine. Okay, now, because it's an effect, these are all projections of our initial graphic here. So if I move just him, notice they all move together. And that actually helps me a lot when I'm trying to kind of get this distributed and moved. Because what I could do now is I can just copy him. So I'll option drag him down. Yeah, now I've got the grid turned on. So it's snapping, but you can see that this graphic isn't really the same size as my grid spacing here. So this presents a few challenges, right? So I might turn off the grid and find some you know relatively comfortable spacing. Let me just grab those that guy by uh, his own cell there. Yeah, and I might want to group that, yeah, at some point in this process. Uh, and if you're grabbing stuff that you don't want like this, again, you could select it and lock it. So I'll hit Command-2. Okay, so just so that these guys are all grouped, which is a good practice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that these are equidistant, that is sort of in their vertical spacing, not just the horizontal spacing. And that really is a job for the align vertical distribute center button and you can see that that nudged it down a little bit okay so i've got 15 yeah but what if i need 13 yikes right because maybe on this last one i could uh you know i could just turn down the uh the effect but another thing i could do if you do have a projected effect like this is you could select it and go to expand appearance and each instance of that copy is now a selectable object. So I could take all of this and ungroup it. And I could select, <laughs> might have to ungroup it a couple times. All right. And I can just select the stuff that I don't need. Okay. So uh, it's really important to understand that effects, like, you know, let's say this guy. Yeah, those are copies. Right? These are not sort of uh, selectable. Whereas if I go and I were to go to object expand, now these are actual vector paths that I can manipulate. Uh, so if I needed one of them, let's say, to be a different color, right? So maybe it's like, you know, six out of 10 dentists approve this toothpaste, uh, right? And I need to make like, whatever, some, some row of them a different color. I can do that now where I could not do that before. Okay, so that's a really kind of fast and easy way to do lots of copies of icons and to visualize you know, some value of numbers. The last little tip I would give on this is if you're gonna make a comparison of some things, uh, using a bar or a line can be kind of, well, nondescript. So let's say I was doing like the population difference between the United States and China. And this is actually pretty close. Um, I would, by the way, just double check. It does look like those are actually equidistant, uh, but you can always sort of validate it, right? You can make sure they're aligned. Okay. Um, but here's what I would do, because I need to make these proportional to these numbers. And that's gonna be better than like a line because it's about population. So I should probably have a person and I don't wanna make 330 of them. And you know this would be ridiculous. So instead, here's what I might do. I have taken this, this grouped object and I can go to transform. Now, 
let's say I type in 330 pixels, or maybe it's just 33, right? Something that is going to give us this value that we can kind of, you know, use and expand. So that's 33 pixels high. Well, what I could do is drag them over and make one that is proportionally the same. Uh, so this one corresponds to that 33, but then other one's going to be 144, okay? So that it's going to be proportional to the numbers. All right. So that's the size difference made visual using an icon that relates to the topic, and that's going to be much more interesting, right, than maybe just a line. So icons can be used in this way too. And what I would do is just take them both, scale them up, right? Maybe move this guy over to the center here. Um, we got some, you know, alignment issues we got to resolve. But if I bring him on down, this is a better way of showing that visual than just the numbers and probably better than just a zillion tiny little icons. Okay, so there are a couple of tricks for for tiling and replicating icons, for creating icons, and for maybe scaling an icon to show maybe a difference in speed or size or height or, or you know, relative scale, whatever it might be. All right.